Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going from this to this. Every producer in every genre needs a nice set of dreamy pads, and I'm gonna show you the foundation I use for almost every single one, so you can go make your own. You'll be a much more dangerous and unique producer if you use your own sounds. It's easy and it's worth it. Oh, and if you stick around, I'm gonna show you my go-to technique on how to make unique textures really fast. Let's go. Now let me ask you a question. Do you ever find yourself doing this? Now scrolling through presets is totally fine if you don't know how you want it to sound, but often there are times when you're producing where you're like, oh, I want this to sound sort of lush and dreamy, for example. To make things sound that way, we want it to have sort of a pleasing, smooth, almost ethereal quality to it, as opposed to more bright and aggressive sounds. Like almost something that a monk could meditate to, you know? So starting with the texture, we need to find a waveform that is harmonically rich because that gives us the most flexibility down the line in shaping the sound how we want it to. So today we're gonna be starting with a sawtooth. And by the way, I'm using Serum for this, but you can totally follow along in your favorite synth because a lot of what I'm talking about is gonna be conceptual. So if we started with a sine wave instead of a sawtooth, let me just show you what would happen. So if I play a note with a sine wave, you can see that there aren't very many harmonics happening. So when we're shaping the sound with filters, for example, we quickly run out of options about where it could sit in the mix. Now look at the difference when I play the same note, but with a sawtooth. Tons of harmonics. And when you stack up notes like you do in a chord, it gets even crazier. So when we try to filter that, It provides a really solid foundation for us to start from. I'm just gonna start with something really simple and, and smooth it out a little bit with a low pass filter and just leave it there, but we can make adjustments later on. Now here's where some real magic comes in because what we can do to make it sound even more harmonically rich is increase the amount of voices that are singing each note and then slightly detuning each one of the singers, almost as if we have a choir instead of just one person. So on your synth, just look out for where you can control the number of unison voices. So from here in Serum, it's here. We're just gonna increase that. And then we're gonna decrease the detuning a bit because we don't want it to sound too dissonant. Yeah. Now, if you do go overboard with the detuning, it'll start to sound like a horrifying nightmare. Less is more on that one. So the next thing we wanna do is start thinking about the envelope and how we want it to sound over time after we play a note. Since we want sort of a pleasing and smooth texture, let's slow down the attack and we're gonna slow down the release. Let's start with about 50 milliseconds for the attack. And then when I let go of the note, I want it to keep playing for another couple of seconds. So let's start with, say, two seconds. Now we're getting somewhere. Now the other envelope we wanna think about here is the filter envelope, which controls how it acts over time. And rather than just having the filter be static, let's try to introduce some more movement in there to make it a little more interesting. So for something lush, let's design it so that the filter opens and closes in a way that sort of follows our original envelope. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab our original envelope and drag it onto the filter cutoff here. Now we don't want it to be that dramatic, so I'm gonna tame that a bit by just reducing the amount that the envelope affects the filter. There we go. So now you can see it sounds a bit more natural and more interesting that way. One other thing that I like to do with pad sounds like this is make sure that I increase the polyphony count from eight until, I don't know, about 16 or so, so that I make sure I have enough voices to play each note, because sometimes with pads you play more extended chords, uh, which have a lot of notes, and you don't want any of them to be cut off by the synth. Here is a perfect point to save your progress so that you can use this as a building block in the future uh, for different pad sounds. So I'm gonna just call mine Dreamy Pad Start because where we go from here is gonna be all preference and you just gotta let your creativity take you where it wants to take you. Now we can just start adding a bunch of random effects, right? 
But I think it's really important that we stay intentional about how we are crafting this sound. So if you think about what dreaminess is, obviously it's much different and more exaggerated than day-to-day -day life. So effects are what we can really use to spice up a sound from that boring reality, right? So in order for us to make more of a rich stereo image, let's add a little delay in there and make it a ping pong delay, which just basically creates an alternating delay between the left and right channels. There we go. I'm gonna increase that dry wet so that I get more of the delays, maybe reduce the feedback a bit. Now, of course, of course, we can throw on a little bit of reverb because reverb kind of makes things sound a little bit more ethereal and otherworldly. Now at this point, I wanna find a couple of ways that we can make the sound a bit more unique. So let's say we wanted it to sound a bit more like real human voices were singing the notes of our pad. What we could do is add a filter and specifically a formant filter, which mimics the resonances in the human voice and see how that sounds. And what happens when we move this cutoff is now it's sounding a bit more heavenly. What we could also do is add a bit more movement. So if we threw on a phaser, reduce the depth here and the feedback. Now it's coming along. Now let's find a way to make it sound a bit more dreamy. So one thing that I like to do is add a grain delay if you have access to it in Ableton. Otherwise, you could also use something like the crystallizer from Sound Toys. <laughs> Okay, now what we need to do is <laughs> decrease the frequency here, which basically reduces the size of each grain or short delay. And there are no rules here, you know, you're just having fun with it, trying to find the right balance here. One thing I also heard too is I, I want to slow this attack down even more because I want it to sort of fade in and uh, be a bit more gentle, so... We've actually come a long way if you think about what we've started with. Now, I did promise that if you stuck around, I would show you my bonus tip on how to make unique textures really, really fast. Now, you don't always have to use a synth. You can start with existing sounds to make really cool textures. And I'm gonna prove it to you. Let's start with the lamest sound that we could possibly find. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is freeze it and flatten it so we can get it in audio. What you can do though is use a stretching plugin and I'm using an open source plugin called Paul Stretch. Thank you, Paul Nasca. I've been using this for years and you can actually go download it for free. Now, if you can get past the old school design, this thing is really unique and really powerful. You can take audio and stretch it up to one quintillion times what it was originally. You think that's enough? So here's why this thing is a beast. Select. You can already hear it getting to work here. And honestly, you just go through and explore. So I'm just moving like the stretch amount. I'm changing the uh, FFT size, which is basically the size of the grains, almost like our grain delay was. And you can get some really cool textures. Now listen to the texture that I was able to get just out of this single piano. And what I like to do with these is use them as a, as the start of another track. So let me just show you real quick. I'm just recording this in so I can use it for something. Now if we pull up sort of a, another piano here. You know, just a nice simple idea like that, but it's very haunting with this texture in the background. It makes it really cool. So we'll listen to it without. With it back in. These types of things also make for great 
intros and outros and bridges and that type of thing. So just have some fun and play around with it. All right, guys, hopefully this helps you up your uh, synth game and your texture game and add some interesting elements to your songs. Now, if you do have questions about this whole process or you want to see more of something, please do let us know down in the comments and we will get back to you. Have fun making music and uh, we'll see you in the next one.